What's up guys, TP-Link sent me their Archer BE550 Wi-Fi 7 router. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what it comes with. So we have a lot of vents on this router. We have the LED bar in the front. We have the rubberized feet on the bottom and we have three buttons in the front. We have a WPS button, a Wi-Fi on or off button and an LED on or off uh, button. And this is the LED, pretty much goes all the way to the top as you guys can see there. And as far as the ports are concerned, there are five ethernet ports. All five can support up to 2.5 gigabit speeds and your modem would have to connect to the WAN port right here. And then we have a USB 3.0 port, a factory reset, a power, that's where that goes in and we have a power on or off. We have the quick installation guide, gives us some information right here. Uh, we have some other documentation right here and we have the factory reset tool kind of like a sim card remover that would go behind it if you wanted to do the factory reset where the hole I mentioned. Uh, we have an ethernet cable. It does not say uh, what category it is if it's 5e or 6 or something like that. And we have the power port right here. It is 100 to 240 volts. Output is 12 volts at 3.3 amps. If you multiply those numbers, you get a little over 36 watts of power. So it's been about two weeks since I've unboxed this thing. I have been using it as my main router and I had a chance to do all the speed test range tests. I have all those numbers here and I used the following Wi-Fi devices. So I had no issues setting it up. Use the Tether app, a very simple to use. It's, it's pretty similar to the Deco app if you guys have seen that. Um, it's a very nice clean interface. It gives you some options and we'll talk about the Tether app in a bit. So we're gonna start off with the internet speed test and as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. So for me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. However, if the router can't go that fast, now you're limited by the router speed. So in my case, the router is actually limiting my speeds to 2.5 gigabits per second. So when I do the test via ethernet on my computer that can go up to those speeds, I do get those pretty much 2.5 gigs up and down. So looking at the results, we could see that the Wi-Fi 7 pretty much got to just about those speeds. So Wi-Fi 7 did very, very well. Wi-Fi 6E was obviously not as fast, uh, but still got some solid speeds nonetheless. Now, to truly test out this router, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And what this does is it isolates the router. So I'm no longer relying on the public speed test server nor my ISP, my internet service provider. And so again, isolating the router, looking at these results, we Wi-Fi 7 pretty much capped out at 2.5 gigabits. I mean, just under, but I mean, practically there. And Wi-Fi 6E definitely did better. So then it did with the internet speed test. So overall going very, very well. Next, we'll jump into range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in between floors, I, I think I said that. Uh, essentially, the more, obstructions, uh, the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. And the more of an open area you're in, typically the more range you're gonna get. So in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, hardly a drop. Um, definitely a drop in the upload section, but for the download section, not much of a drop. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside, definitely a drop here, but still getting some crazy fast absurd speeds. And even at 100 feet, which is across the street, especially with the Wi-Fi 7 device, very, very usable speeds with Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E. The way you set up and configure this thing is with the Tether app, it's available both on iOS and on Android, and it pretty much kind of walks you through the process. It tells you to, you know, like disconnect your modem, wait two minutes, plug this in, wait till this light goes on and everything like that and then you pick your Wi-Fi name and password and if you choose the same Wi-Fi name and password as your router that you're replacing all your devices should automatically connect to this new one and do keep in mind that the Wi-Fi name which is the SSID and the password they are both case sensitive so keep that in mind um, so once you get that set up it shows you all the devices that are connected um, you get some basic parental controls and you know you could pretty much pause devices you could set some uh, bedtimes and there's some filtering controls in there as well however if you want more advanced parental controls with more time controls that does require a separate subscription uh, and then for the Wi-Fi name you know you, you could separate out the bands if you wanted to uh, you can make a separate MLO band well, an SSID just for that you can make a separate guest network uh, you could set up VPN with this thing as well. And this thing is also an easy mesh compatible router. So if you get another one of these TP-Link routers that is easy mesh compatible. So basically if you got two of these, they can work together to create a mesh Wi-Fi network to pretty much get better coverage throughout. 
So with that said, what do I think of this router? Well, this router for the price, this is one of the most affordable Wi-Fi 7 routers out as of now. And it's fantastic for internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. And the fact is if you get one of these and it's not enough, let's say you live in a larger home, typically for larger homes, I, I usually lean more towards the mesh Wi-Fi. I, I just like getting that as a combo. But if you wanted to start out with just a router, uh, test it out, especially if it's centrally placed, Generally, if the router is centrally placed, it's going to get better coverage than if it's on one side of your house and you're trying to get coverage on the other side of your house. But the cool thing is with this, if you get this and you're like, okay, everything's good, but I just wish I got a little bit better coverage on that side, you could get another one of these and you can, again, create a mesh network out of it and should be good to go. So I would say uh, very good for the price, for the technology, the fact, again, that it has Wi-Fi 7. Um, yeah, up to 2.5 gigabits, definitely recommend. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.